So, I guess this is going to be kind of maybe the first in some messages that I want to give about politics and religion in this nation. And I've been writing about it for a long time, and you all know I have some very strong opinions. I was tooling around on the internet the other day, and I happened to stumble upon something that somebody else wrote. You know, it was one of those, somebody who's a friend of somebody who's a friend of somebody. Next thing you know, I'm on this page called The Christian Left. So I checked in. And I started reading... Uh, just very briefly through through some of the posts. And man, I started seeing a lot of political jargon, terminology, uh, buzzwords and catchphrases that uh, politicians love to use. Conservatism, liberalism, the Christian left, the Christian right. And, and you know what, I really, I, I, I really started to get bugged by this because what, what I'm seeing here is this. I'm seeing a way for people who are really political zealots to drag Christians in by seducing them with their vernacular and subtly including them as liberal Christians or conservative Christians. Come on, man. You know, the Constitution and even God's law. Let's, let's go back to God's law. Let's, let's start with the Ten Commandments. God's law is a conservative document that, when followed, will very uh, effectively protect liberal freedoms. And when you practice and you hold those laws faithfully, they will protect you. Particularly the law against bearing false witness, which is a law against lying to your fellow man. If you can't be honest and faithful, and if you don't know the difference between a lie or the truth, then you're going to really be hard-pressed to prove to somebody like me that you're even capable of entering into a contract because you just don't have the skills necessary to do it. When it comes down to politics and religion in this country, I want you to remember something. As Christians in the United States, you have been told time and time again that God is the creator and that Christ is the Lord, the Lord and head of a kingdom, a political establishment, and one much older than the United States. The United States Constitution says, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion. And the lawyers have interpreted that to mean the First Amendment establishes an unbreakable wall between church and state. Okay, fine. Let us go and let us worship without having to pay taxes, without having to get drugged into your political nonsense, without having to support your genocidal campaigns against brown people in other countries since you ran out of brown people to destroy in this country. I'm tired of it, man. You guys lied. Straight up lied. And it's easy enough to prove. History is my witness. You take any history book from the fourth grade level up to the collegiate level, I'll just sit it on the witness chair and you can read it. So here's the point I'd like to make. As Christians, you have made a choice to affiliate yourselves with a monotheistic dictatorship because you like the dictator. He's a good guy, right? And you like the idea of Christ being compassionate and forgiving, but yet he's got to toe the party line, doesn't he? He's got to stand up and say, certain things I will not approve of. Just can't do it. Uh, it goes against my religion. So when you choose this religion, isn't it true that it's no different than going to a polling booth and casting a vote for your political choice? You're choosing a kingdom. You have made your vote. 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 As a Christian, you have selected God and Christ as your political leaders, and I don't think that there's any reason that you should have to go one step further and then choose something that some satanic, baby-killing bunch of political zealots wants to drag you into. And that's exactly what they do, right? That's exactly what they do. How many of your young sons offered up their lives on their altar of capitalism to spread freedom and democracy through the world at the barrel end of a gun? Huh? When did God ask you to do that? Not recently. So remember this. When you choose Christianity, that is your vote, man. That's where it begins and ends. And anybody else who says, well, no, no, now you have to choose between us, you really don't, man. You said, I already made my choice. Separation of church and state. 
I think that's fair, don't you? Okay. <laughs> Probably better that I write this stuff down because it just doesn't come out so hostile. I love you guys, those of you who love me. And I like, or could like, those of you who are going to find what I say objectionable. And I'm looking out for you too, because you've been sold a bill of goods, and the sooner you realize that and figure it out, the better off we're all going to be. Okay? It's 2012. Let's put an end to the wicked world, and let's get the good, harmonious, happy land of the earth going. Couldn't we do that? You know, the, the end of the world doesn't necessarily mean that the end of the earth has to come to pass. It doesn't have to be some uh, catastrophic disaster. It really doesn't. So uh, think about it. Anyway, I'm signing off for now. I'll be back later. Goodbye.